close it. Okay. As a preliminary matter, this is Carol Bird, Chair of the Library Board of Trustees. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Amy Bartoloni. Present. Laura Howard. Here. Nicole Buckley. Present. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Steve, oh, Bernadette Rivard. Here. And hello, Sue. <laughs> um, introduction to remote meeting. Good, good evening. This open meeting of the Bellingham Library Board of Trustees is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth, due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings, and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting, the Bellingham Library Board of Trustees is convening by telephone conference slash video conference via Zoom, as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Please be aware that we have disabled video, audio, and screen sharing for the public. Only members and library staff will have access to video, audio, and screen sharing. The public will be able to view and hear meeting participants only. All of the materials for this meeting, except any executive session materials, are linked on the library website unless noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless I note otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each, I did that right. I'll introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in discussion with other members, please do so through the chair taking care to identify yourself. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Okay, so I will call this meeting, I forget how you say it, for <laughs> to start at, let's see, 7.09 p.m. Is that right? Um, this is Nicole Buckley. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Um, I'm in favor. This is Amy. I'll second. They look lovely, Laura. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing them. Sorry, I'm jumping between well, two machines, so I'm using the wrong mouse. Um, Thank you. I'm hoping Sue will love to take this over soon. <laughs> <laughs> so Laura, um, I think you need to yeah, get roll call of the members to approve the minutes. So you have to go through the other people. Okay, sorry. You guys are cutting in and out, so I a little bit didn't hear that. But um, so, so far we have Amy second in that and then Nicole in favor? Yeah, I think that's how you do it, right? I already forgot. <laughs> I, so I, I um, made the motion. Amy seconded. You already did? So you're freezing up on me. I'm so sorry. Hang on. Let me close a couple things. Okay. okay. So you're Carol, you're going to check that everyone's in favor. I'm so sorry. I know. I just, I was having a little trouble with 
So are all in favor? Amy? I, Nicole? Yes. Okay. Do we have to get Laura? Oh, Laura. Did Laura Hi, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so. okay. Next. Um, okay. So I guess the next is for me to give the financial report. Okay, so um, since the last meeting, we have had tw um, $28 that was deposited into the user fee account and a $100 um, gift fund do donation, which was from Don Eldridge, our former um, custodian and member of Mary Claire Burke, who is a longtime trustee who passed away, um, over, I think it was in May. Um, I will also be reading the individual invoices that we paid um, since the last meeting. So we had two batches that were dated 6.30, one that we did on 6.30 and another that we submitted this week. And because it was the end of the fiscal year, the batch has the same date. So the first batch, um, dated 6.30, books and periodicals, $11,473.10. The gift fund, $472.43. Building maintenance costs, $8,995.89. State aid supplies, $496.78. Office supplies, $50.04. Technical maintenance services, $532.39. Users fees, $77.94. COVID-19 professional services, $8,200. That was the cost for the faucet and um, lavatory self-flushing upgrades. And COVID-19 supplies of $1,077.19. Those were a variety of things we needed um, for safety and supply for COVID-19 for a total of $21,045.76. The second batch, uh, building maintenance and supplies, $100.93. Books and periodicals, $732.12. Electricity and gas, $735.97. Office supplies, $36.68. And COVID-19 supplies, $56.94 for a total of $16.53.54. And then I guess we move on to my director's report. Okay, let's see what I have here. Can I ask a question about the COVID supplies? Sure. How are they? <laughs> the bathroom things. They're good. The toilet, the self flushing toilets are great. Um, the, the 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 faucets. The one we have on the staff lounge is like finding that sensor, like where you know you put your hands there and then it moves. And um, the one they installed at Pauline's desk, where the staff washes their hands, has a sensor on top that you can touch and it just stays on until you touch the top one. To, not touch it, but it's a sensor that you wave your hand That's over. That's what I was going to ask, because some of them shut off too quickly. Yeah, you? They, yeah. well, if you keep your hand in front of the sensor, it stays on. But as you're rubbing them, you're like outside of the mind of the sensor, and they, they, go, they, they go. But um, I was going to actually ask the um, plumber when we see them, is if they could just be kept on for, could they be put on a timer that they kept on for 20 seconds, and then they shut off? Because right. that's how yes, long we want to washing. encourage people to wash their hands for 20 enough. seconds. Yes, enough. Right. So um, we'll figure that out when we get there. But they, they are nice. They, they, look, they look really good. There are two. He didn't do the two kitchens. So I'm going to contact him to have him do the, the staff kitchen and the community kitchen. Somehow did not get included in that first round. Um, so we'll, we'll get those two done uh, shortly. Thank you. Okay. okay. So. Um, so what the, where we are with the coronavirus response is right now we have been doing curbside since July 1st. It's been going very well. It's very labor intensive. Um, you know, they have to print out the list of things people have requested or people are, so people are requesting either on their library account, by a Google form, or they're calling us. So every time someone requests something, we have to get it, check it out to them, put it in a bag. It, it, is, it is very, very labor intensive process, um, but it, it's, it's working well. Um, I think people are appreciative they can start getting getting our getting stuff um, and the next phase that we're looking to is what we're calling grab and go so we have um, cordoned off a section of the library I measured it the other day it's 1801 square feet approximately of space um, so based on the 8,000 uh, eight people per thousand square foot we'll be able to have 14 people in the library at up to 14 people at a, at a time and even when we, and it's still 25 people in a building is the, is the current guidance. So if we have even 10 staff, which is probably the maximum that we ever have, 
we can have up to 14 people. I'm going to suggest that when we talk about the policy that we make it either 10 or 12, because if we can have, say, 14, say we have 11 people in the building and someone comes in, the next person in line has three kids, we wouldn't have to wait till three people leave the next, to let the next group in. So we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit, um, noting on that. But um, so that I sent the draft plan. plan. Um, I, the, the, I want you to vote on adopting phase two, which is to start the grab and go when we have all the supplies and the, the items in that we need to do it. The earliest, I think the press release I did said, um, we anticipate it starting by August 3rd. Um, and I don't know if we just ought to go with August 3rd as a date or if, you're, you know, or if we should aim to do it the week before. I don't think we'll be ready on the 20th. We're not gonna be ready a week from Monday, I don't think. Um, do we just wait till the first Monday in August to do it? Or do we try to push it to the 27th if we're ready? That's a question that I'd like you guys to, to discuss and, and give advice on. Um, is anyone else experiencing Bernadette going in and out? Because I'm catching like the gist of it, but yeah. <laughs> you are in and out for me. Let me move my mic maybe, closer. I wonder if you could try to log out and log in, maybe? Yeah. Is, my, I, my, is it better if I'm closer to my mic? I hear you fine, Bernadette. I can hear okay. you fine. Okay. I do too. I mean, right now I hear you. Okay. Okay. So I, the discussion is about the date and the number of people that you guys want to, I'd like you guys to vote on that. Um, well, what so, is your I number of questions? Oh. Sorry, oh, well, Carol. <laughs> I, I mean, I think we might be ready by the 27th, but it really, and I'm thinking, does it just make sense to say we're starting at the first of a month? Um, it might make it easier. I've already done, like even for staff scheduling, I've finished the schedule through the end of the 20, whatever the 28th, the Wednesday is before. So it'd be easier to schedule staff starting for the new week. Cause obviously we'll need more staff if we're open to the public more hours. Um, I think it's fine to push it back um, till September 3rd. First uh, of the not month. Not September, it was yeah. August, oh, 3rd. August 3rd. August, August 3rd, sorry. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> no, August 3rd, yeah. first of the month. Um, yeah. I think more where we're getting in trouble is where we're pushing things too fast. And if you don't mm -hmm. feel you'll be ready in time or it's just, cutting yeah. that window of being ready, just put it out another week. It's really not that big of a deal. And I think it will also give us more time to see, you know, as, as the numbers are starting to climb, is something going to change in the state too? Because, I mean, Bellingham was at two a week ago and now we're at back to 11 cases. Um, what is the, oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I keep cutting people off. What are the supplies that you need to order? You, you um, well, no, they've been ordered. They're just waiting. The, the, today the rope lines came in. Okay. Um, so it's, 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 small, it's small things that we need. We have plenty of Masks, plenty of sanitizer. The sanitizer stand, I think, came in, but we're missing dispensers, so we're gonna have to put out just pumps of sanitizer. So I just want to make sure this will give me a couple more weeks to figure out that we have everything that we need, you know, to do it to do it as the best we can. So um, what if you, um, since you have the schedule done to the 29th, and I, I think it's fine waiting until August, but if you, you wanted to do like a soft opening, where you you know, tested it out, like either like Thursday and Friday or even just Friday, then you could know what to tweak for the big yeah. regular. You know what, <laughs> what Charlton did exactly that. They were, they were opening, they're opening on Monday as their official date, but anyone that calls them yesterday and today, they're telling them to come on, come on in. So they were kind of, you know, if people yeah. just show up, Testing. they're, they're letting their, so that is a, yeah, we could do it in that actually, and I could have the schedule ready for that because the schedule is done through whatever the Wednesday, the last Wednesday. Yeah, the, the 29th is, is the yeah. Wednesday. Right. I have so, yeah, calendar. calendar. So, um, oh. so, I, so I don't, and I, I kind of like the way that you did it when you were having like the curbside and then in that email you said, um, you know, you, you can bring your books back, but then you didn't really announce it so you could see how it went. Right. Yeah. Right. The other, so there's a couple other tweaks that we came up today. We, today we were talking about um, the, the schedule was to be open we had said 10 to 3 those of those three days we really think we want to do it 11 to 3 because it's sometimes mornings taking them till 11 to get the curbside stuff ready to get out so i think we just do the 11 to 3 the tuesday wednesday friday um and then the 12 30 to 6 12 to 6 30 the other two days because the curbside getting the stuff it'll be ready that'll be done and ready to put out before we open the doors to the public. And again, you can always change it, you know, if it's right. going faster once people start less, but right. you might as well start with a buffer. Right, I think that's, yeah. I, so so there's three things. Oh, the hours, so first of all, let's do one at a time. So you guys are okay with the, because what I would like to do is to announce that we anticipate opening, that I have that press release that's later in the, the thing. I would like to announce what the rule, what the ground rules are gonna be, what 
So the expectations of this, people know the children's room is not going to be open. They know the cafe, you know, what, let people know what they're going to, what they're going to be able to do. Um, I think that's important because you don't want people walk, walking in and expecting the whole building to be available to them. And this, there definitely will still be some that haven't read a thing that are going to wander in. But, um, and our plan is to have, and I talked to a group today, um, the Milton Library is doing, they opened this week and they have a greeter at the door, welcoming people, thanking them for wearing their mask, asking them to apply sanitizer and telling them what, what's going on as they come in. So I think that's gonna be one, somebody's job. And I'll probably do it a couple of days in the beginning or a couple hours at least in the beginning to be the greeter of people into the building to let them know what, what the expectations are. I had some questions about um, phase two, Bernadette. Yep. Uh, if you could just clarify the policy on using the computers, yep. um, because it does say on one page, it's like very limited patron access to computers. And then on another page, uh, okay. so, Initially, we are not going to permit computers. I want to. I want to do it for a couple, maybe a week or two, to see how it goes, um, and then we're going to talk about computer use by reservation, so, and, okay. and we're talking about just literally one reservation at a time. So Cecily deals with one person at a time. The rule is going to be that she is not available to help anybody one on one. They can bring a person in with them if they need help using a computer. Um, mm -hmm. So that, so I'll, I'll, I think we have to clarify that in the write-up because it, there were two pages that seemed to conflict a little about that. Okay. So was one in the full policy and the other was in the press release or? Um, it was, they were both in the policy. Okay. I will do, I'll double check that and make sure it's changed. Okay. And um, I just had a question about um, camcorder and tripod for filming online content. I didn't know yep. what that was. Um, Steve purchased, where was, what was that under? The, it's under equipment. I just I can't think of what that. Oh, was. I didn't oh, understand. So Steve basically bought a tripod oh, and okay. a camcorder. So when he does, so so he's not just using an iPad to make um, okay. to make video. It's a, it's for it's for online programming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the the, the August third and and I think it's going to say we anticipate opening August third because if something changes, okay. we don't we want to be able to have the the ability to say that was you know whatever. Um, 11, the hours will be 11 to three instead of 10 to three. And then we'll do these, the senior hours. We tend to 10 to 11 on Fridays. We'll still let the seniors and the immunocompromised people in an hour early on Fridays. So there'll be an hour a week set aside for people that, um, are that, and they're going to self-identify. We're not, you know, asking you how old you are or any of that. It's just a time for people to come in, um, when they're hopefully, and from what I'm hearing, the libraries that are open, they're not getting a lot of people. They're getting, you know, a few people at a time. People are still cautious. People are still using curbside or finding other ways to pick things up. So it's a, it'll, it should be a slow, a slow opening. Um, okay. So, and as far as capacity, um, I was thinking of 12 people, the staff is advocating for 10. So I, I mean, the, the map, the max is 14. The max is 14. 11 seems like a weird number. <laughs> I hate Not prime number, numbers. But <laughs> I hate prime numbers, no. Um, I mean, I, I don't know that it's going to make that much of a difference at any given time. I think it's going to come down to if there is a small family that, a family that comes in, they could be taking up. And it is 30 minutes in the building. That's where we're asking them not to be there longer than... I don't see how they could spend more than 15 with the amount of space that we have laid out to browse things. Um, it's there's not that much area to look to go through all right so should i and i can make someone make a motion on how many people or somebody or discuss tell me what what your what your feeling is i mean if you if the staff is advocating 10 and that make them happier i'm okay with that i think 10 is fine and then you can always be lenient you know right, right. so if it's yeah okay that's good. I don't have to actually vote on that. I just wanted input from you guys on that. Um, okay. So the mask, um, the mask policy, basically, um, it's if and I like it. It doesn't say we're going to kick you out if you don't wear one. It says all staff working in public areas and patrons visiting the library must wear a mask or face covering that covers both their mouth and nose. Patrons choose not to wear a mask or face covering will be assisted by phone, email, or curbside checkout. So that's if you're not wearing it. Um, you know, even if it's, I think even if it is for a medical reason, you probably shouldn't be in a public building if you have a medical reason not to wear a mask, you know? Um, and I, from what I've heard, there's been very little pushback 
in Bellingham about about um, people wearing masks in public places. So, um, you know, I think if someone comes in without the mask, we offer them one because we have some. The friends have purchased some, and actually the town gave us. They got some donate donations from someone of some kids ones. So there's kids ones that have little happy faces all over them. So um, we can offer them to people come without their kids wearing one too. And if they say no, then we'll deal with people one on one by one if they if they. But that that is you know we, this is how we can help you. We'll we'll do the same service. We just can't be in the building because there really isn't anything they can do there. Now if it comes down to computers down the road, that might be a different thing. But right now all they can do is browse and get materials. So we can still get materials to them curbside. We can still answer their questions by phone. We can still, you know, deal with things by email. So I'm, I'd rather not put what happens if you refuse. We'll deal with that if and when it happens. Do you think we should put something like until further notice? At, that looks like it's forever. I think it's until the, as long as it's a gov as long as the governor has it as a state guideline. I think we can keep it. You know. Yeah. If the governor lifts the order, then we have to talk about, do we want to keep doing does No, I well, mean, in the, in the policy, should we have that in the policy until further notice or until... Just start it with... It, until just, such policy is rescinded or... Just start it at the beginning. So there's a vaccine. <laughs> well, her, you're start, a lawyer. I mean, just start at the beginning, until further notice, all staff working in public areas. Well, this is our second reading of it. Um, right. Oh, I thought... No, this is the first meeting. First reading. Reading. Well, this is the first, first reading. This is the first reading, Sorry. right, right. Which is, and technically we're going to be open before the second reading takes place probably because you guys aren't meeting until after that. I don't, but I don't think, think it's a big necessary deal. to put in. We can just repeal it when we feel it's no longer open. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I think as long as the governor or his order is in effect, or even if the governor rescinds it and the Board of Health keeps it for Bellingham, I think it's, because Bellingham had it before the, before the state did. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I don't know that that's necessary. Okay. Okay, so did we do our reading or? I, yeah, I, I read it. Let me okay, read it so one I'll more make time. a motion okay. to accept. Oh, no, we, this is only our first reading. We don't need right. a motion. So you need a motion, but you need a motion to approve the first reading. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the first reading of the mask face covering policy as read by Bernadette Rivard. Okay, so Amy. I'll second. Nicole. I agree. Aye. All in favor. I, I realized I didn't put in my report anything about the HVAC, so I want to give you guys an update on the HVAC. The air conditioning has been working, fingers crossed, um, since the, the repair that was over $6,000, but it's working. Um, so um, the goal is to get it through the summer. Um, I contacted Roger, and he put me in touch with a company called Northern Energy who works with MassSave. Um, so they work with the Eversource and um, National Grid. Um, now Columbia Gas, well, we have National Grid and Columbia Gas. Um, so what they did is they sent out one of their, their um, consultants. He came, he took pictures of our current system. He took copies of the electric bill. And they, what they do is they send it out to MassSave contractors to make proposals. Um, so we will have our proposal before October town meeting. Um, with a, with a dollar amount, so we can go to October Town Meeting to update update the heating and air conditioning system. Um, I we already have a placeholder on the warrant. Um, Dennis knows it needs to go there, so there's a placeholder without a dollar amount until we know what the dollar amount is going to be. I would say the plan is the heating system is still working, so I think it would make sense if we get the money and it'll be late October. That'll give them time to plan it, and then maybe we install it in late March or April in the spring when we don't might not need heating or air conditioning, you know, that they can shut this, the whole system down and get it installed in the spring. Um, so that's the current plan. Um, but the town knows that we, you know, we can't, I mean, it was a thousand dollars a day every day they were there to try to get this thing up and running. So um, it's, 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 it's time. So that's just an update on that. Okay. Um, on the staff update, there was a uh, contract. So myself, Steve, Amanda, and Cecily's contracts all expired. Um, at the end of this fiscal year. We talked last month about just extending them a year instead of writing the new contracts because there are, there are no salary increases um, because of the, uh, the budget situation. Um, and it was just simpler just to extend. So I have the documents to extend the contracts. It has the same salary amount as before. They do need to be signed by you guys in person. So I'll send out an email and we'll talk about getting you guys to come into the, you know, come in to get them signed. Um, but I just need you to approve extending the contracts for 
for one year. I thought we did that last last month. I, I don't know that you voted on it. I, I, did you vote on approving it? Let me check that. I thought we did. Um, let's see. Which... Contracts. HR recommends we extend them. You did. It's there. It's in the minutes. Okay, that's already been done. So I will have those. I will let, let you guys know when they're ready for you to come in and sign them, um, so we can get those over to over to town hall. Okay. Um, they they are, I'm verifying with Beth the exact dollar amounts because the the because it depends on the number of like days in the year. And last year had a what do you call it a um, leap year this day. Year so year. <laughs> leap year. This year's not leap year. So it's like there's like sense numbers different that we have to fix. So once I get them ready to go, I'll let you know they're ready. And then you know I can even put them out on the picnic table, and you guys can come. Whatever. We'll, we'll figure out getting them signed. Um, the other thing that I have that I did not put in the um, in the director's report that I thought of after is the vacation carryover. Um, and I do have the letters from all of the staff on the vacation. A lot of us have time because for the last five months, no one's taken any vacation because uh, they are so. Um, I have letters from Cecily, Steve, Amanda, and myself. Cecily has six days, Steve has four, Amanda has one and a half. And I have 19 days that I have not taken, which is, I carry, look, I carried over 11 last year and there's just been no time to take them. So I'm, I am asking to carry all 19. I know that's a lot. Um, I'm hoping I'll do something in the next, over the summer, in a couple of weeks over the summer and try to get, get this down. So I'm not carrying over more than 10 at the end of next year, but I am asking that you approve the days that I didn't take. We had a discussion, and I'm not trying to point fingers at you, but we had a discussion about this last year because there was a, a, a bigger amount carried over last year as well. It was 11. because we I, had talked about possibly limiting the amount that was carried over at that right, point. Right. You did. Now, I, don't think you ever, I don't think there was ever, because I had 11 last year, and I think we were talking about is it, the goal is 10, but I think this has been an extraordinary I mean, literally, oh, I would have thought absolutely, but for the future, year, right? I would like yeah. to put a limit right. on that because if it keep if it keeps going right. you'll end up with you know yeah right eight weeks of vacation time right I, I i i agree i definitely agree that and i will do my best i i think i can take some fridays and mondays and do things to bring this down you know so i'm not carrying as much next year that would definitely be my goal and i'm fine if you guys want to put a, a limit on it right now is I'm, that something we need to talk to beth about uh limiting carryovers or is that something that's in our purview well, i think it's in your purview but i can check with her but from what i know you guys have to approve any carryover. So I would assume you could you could limit, if you have the authority to approve, you probably have the authority to limit. I would I, I will check with her if that you think, if that's a good idea. It probably is a good idea. Um, and I, you know, this this year I've hit five. This year is so two. weird and yeah. it's, you know, who would take, no one's taking away your days. It's yeah. just kind of a, you know. I think it's, a, I, a I agree that it's good to have a policy. Those days for the period that they're given. Right, yeah. And maybe it is a percentage of the time, you know, when, when you're brand new and you only get three weeks, you know, I don't know, is it a percentage? Because I, now I'm, this year, I, I hit my 11th year this year. So now I've got five, I've got five weeks vacation. So I'm going to get five times 20 more days. So I'm going to have 39 days starting this year, which is a, which is a ton of time, you know? Um, so, um, like I said, my goal is to not carry more than 10, maybe more than 10. That's gen generally been my goal, but it's just, it is what it is. All right, so it, I'm, I'm fine to make a motion to accept those, unless anyone else has stuff they wanna talk about. I'm fine to make a motion to accept those carryovers for the three people, unless we have to sign anything. Um, but I would like to also proceed with um, some sort of, of language limiting the amount mm -hmm. of carryover in the future. Okay, I'll check with Beth to verify that you guys have the authority to do that without, you know, then I'll bring that back to the next meeting. Um, and then we can definitely talk about what that is. Yep. Um, so the, this letter, basically this letter has to be signed by the chair. So Carol, you'll need to sign this letter to mm -hmm. HR to authorize the carryover once once the motion, if, if the motion is approved. All right. Um, so I'll just go in order. Amy? Um, yeah, I'll make that motion. Sorry. Am I supposed to call your names out or are you just going to like raise your hands? I don't know. 
I think you're supposed to call Laura them by name. Just call your name. Right? Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's okay. no pressure on you. <laughs> Wait a second. You just have to be first in my boxes here. Yeah. And then Nicole. So Laura uh, yeah, I'll second motion. or whatever. Okay. Call in favor. Nicole Buckley in favor. All in favor. Okay. Aye. Okay. So that's that. Um, I haven't done, I have to do all the statistics for this, for the fiscal year, and I have to do them soon because my ARIS, the ARIS report I think is due at the end of August. So um, I have done nothing since April, putting any statistics in the, in our statistic dashboard. So um, that'll be a project that I'll work on this month to try to get the fiscal year closed out as far as statistics. Um, there's, I have to make a new category because the state is only, if they're virtual programs, they're only letting us count them if they are live. So anything Steve recorded and done, so I'm still gonna re record those so we know what, how many things we did and how many people watched them, um, but they're only letting us count things that are done live, which I don't, I don't get that, but that's, that's um, that it is what it is. So our numbers will obviously, the statistics are gonna be just all messed up this year because they're not gonna match anything. Um, Steve started Picnic Stories yesterday and actually didn't get a chance to talk with him how it went, but I didn't hear anything negative, so I think it went, I think it went okay. We did make a sign to put on like those voting type things that he brings with him to give remind people of the rules. So he brings one of those over when he goes over there. Um, and I think he's gonna talk about doing more, not just picnic stories, but doing more story times on the common so we can get outside more with some preschoolers. Um, so the budget, we uh, the year is done. Without the last batch, we sent 97.69%. So we're, pro we're gonna be close to spending everything that we had Although the town did take 10,000 away from the number that they gave us. So we're giving them back at least 10,000 or probably close to 13 or 14,000 that we're giving back total at the end of, at the end of the year. Um, and it was just because the HVAC came through that we had to buy that stuff. So it is, you know, that was not money we really planned on spending. Um, the FY21 budget is just started. There was like one days of pay in the, in the one that was there. Um, so we do have a vacancy on the Board of Trustees. The person that ran for uh, the, the seat was moving out of town in August, so she chose not to be sworn in. Um, the town is placing the opening on the town website. I'm not sure if it's up there yet or not. And it'll be accepting applications, and they plan to appoint a new trustee at the August meeting. So um, I, don't, I don't know if it'll be an August meeting before our August meeting or after our August meeting, but um, we do have an applicant. Um, so we'll, we'll see if any others come in, and we'll take it from there. Um, meeting room policy. So I've been asked by a longtime patron that has always used about using the community room. I said, we, there's no way. There's just no way. It, if, if, they're, if they do it when we're open, one person would take us over our 25 people in the building. So we just can't do it. And then she was like, can we do it outdoors in the parking lot? And I don't think, I don't think we want to go there. Um, but I just told her I would bring it to you guys. So I see a lot of shaking heads. No. Okay. I don't understand why our parking lot is better suited to a meeting than. But the, your condo complex is parking lot, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> yeah. good with that either. Okay. okay. Um, so, um, so that I think all the meeting, the, the message is all the meeting rooms are, are closed. Right now we are using the community room um, to um, basically put the, the books that we're waiting to check in, the quarantine books are in, are in there on carts or the, the, the things. I would like, once we open to the public, um, I know the town is looking for spaces for public meetings for town things. So if it was after hours, I would be willing, if we can get someone to stay, I would be willing to permit town use of the building after, you know, for a seven o'clock meeting on a night that I would just stay if a, um, because they have so many lim limited spaces. If we just put, it would have to be under 10 people in the community room because that's all we can put in there. So, um, I, and I, I don't have a problem with opening it up for, for town purposes uh, only. I um, guess I wasn't sure why they, they don't typically have, or why, why do they normally have enough space, but not now? Uh, be, so the, I was at the Arcan mo mo um, meetings. Well, uh, well, it's, um, I, I know the historical commission is looking for a place that's bigger because their rooms are small. Like these places that have smaller 
the historical museum is not big enough for six people to be in there. I think they and, don't have the spacing and, required. Right, to meet the, meet the guidelines. The, uh, I, was at the, okay. I was at town hall today and the Arcan room is set up for a planning board meeting on Monday night. They have tables all over the place. They have plexiglass between the people. To have like nine people in the room, they have to do all this other other things. So, and I don't know that it'll be many. It may it may just be, and then we can decide if we want to have our meetings in person, we can. And I think it's up to us, but I don't think we have to. I think we continue in this format as long as all of the um, the members are comfortable with that. So, and I, I pr frankly, I'd prefer not to do it in person if you guys agree with that. Actually, we had talked about this in past years too, and the using because um, I'm gone yeah. generally a yeah. lot of the summer. Yeah, and using this um, this format for yeah, you know, meetings at yeah. other times as well. And, but, and I think it, that some places I've talked about doing hybrids too. That you know that I could be at the library with a laptop, and whoever wants to be there in person is there in person, and then people that are doing something remotely can you know can call in. I don't and think we this updated is, the um. Gosh, I'm blanking. When we updated, not the community, the, the room that we usually meet in, which I can't. The conference room. The conference room, that would be yeah. the word I can't find. Right. Um, we had talked about with the TV in there, right. yeah. um, allowing for capabilities to do this. Yeah. Right, exactly. And I don't think the state is going to take away the authority for people to meet this way. Once it's happened, I think, you know, that, that, um, that ship has sailed um, as far as, you know, the authority for boards to meet remotely. Um, so, well, we can talk in the future about how that, how, how we want to meet. And I think it can be a hybrid. If some people want to be at the library in person and other pe people want us, you know, do it from home, I think that's perfectly appropriate. Um, so I wanted to update the meeting room policy to basically state, due to social distancing guidelines and occupancy limits, the library will not be accepting room reservations for other than library or town business until further notice. Um, so that, that, that's the simple, I, I, the rest of it was just things. So that, that is the simple that I want to put on the, to update the, meet, the meeting room. Like put that on the top of where people make reservations, turn off the reservations for meeting rooms and just put that on the top of it. Do we need to vote on this? I think, yeah, well, I think, well, I think it, 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 it's a temporary policy, so I don't know if it, it probably is best just to vote, just to have it, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just call each of your names. Amy? Do you need me to make a motion? Yeah. Yes. I think, it's, yeah. okay. am I just calling the name? No somebody, or you... no, somebody needs to make a motion second, then the other people need to be called okay. out. Yeah. All right, I can, I can um, go ahead, Amy. I, I mean, I can make it or second. The updated meeting room policy. I have motion made by Carol Bird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so who did we not hear from? Nicole? Um, I, I agree, I. Okay, everybody? Laura? In favor. Okay, all in favor. So that will need that will technically need a second reading next month, but I'm going to I'm going to even update the website with just draft policy, like, you know, first reading done. So people, we haven't really had that one woman. That's the first person that asked about. I don't think people are expecting the meeting room, but once we open, we might start getting more inquiries about people about about the meeting rooms. I I don't want people in the history room or the study room or any of those. But it's just too it's just too small. They're all too small. I think it just opens up more work for cleaning too. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, the next thing is the children in the library policy. Uh, at this point, who knows what's gonna happen with the schools, and even if they do open, I don't think we have the capacity to do an after-school program. I just don't, I don't see how that's feasible. Um, it, with, even, if, even if the n number increased to 50 people in the building, that room only holds, the community room would be tw a, no more than a dozen people, the teen room, probably no more than eight to 10 people based on guidelines. Which kids would get to come? Is it registration first come first serve? Is it a lottery? You know, it's just, I don't think there's any fair way for us to do it. So I'm recommending that we change our child in the library policy to say children under 16 are not permitted at the library without a parent or guardian. I figure if they're 16, they can drive, they can come in and get their stuff and, you know, and be and, and do what they do. There's gonna be no place to sit. There's gonna be no place to hang around. So. And I don't see that, I really don't see that changing for a while. Um, you know, I, I see us, I, I think the fall is probably all gonna be 
I mean, we might expand the spaces that are open over time, but I don't see us expanding meeting rooms and pro that kind of programming. So if you guys want to discuss that, let me know what you think about it. I don't have any questions. You want me to read the temp so I can read the temporary, my proposed temporary policy. Um, the Bellingham Library Board of Trustees is adopting a temporary policy to reflect our facility and staff capabilities and limitations during the COVID-19 pandemic. The policy on children in the library is not intended to restrict library service to children. Rather, the policy was adopted to ensure the general safety and well-being of children who use the library. Our regular policy permitted children in grades four and up with some restrictions to be in the library unattended. Due to occupancy limits and social distancing guidelines for the foreseeable future, we will not be able to offer that service. Effective, whatever date, and it probably is the date we open to the public would make sense. Children under the age of 16 are not permitted in the library without a parent or guardian. We will be unable to offer in-person programming for children of any ages, including after-school programming for the foreseeable future. Some preschool programming will be held outdoors at the Town Common. Check the library calendar for details. If a child under age 16 is at the library, staff will make every attempt to locate the parent guardian by telephone. If unsuccessful, the library staff will contact the Bellingham Police Department. We will be periodically reviewing this policy and updating it to reflect current conditions. So if something does change, we can, we can talk about changing it. And I, I, I you know, so, and say there was like a kid that lives in the neighborhood that's 14. I'm not going to, we're not going to be carding kids. If a kid comes in and wants to check out a book and they're just by themselves, that's different. The purpose of this is so we don't have groups of children coming after school. You know, that's, a, if they're a little bit older and they just need to come in and get something, that's a, that's, you know, I'm not, we're not going to be that crazy about it, but we need to prevent groups of kids from thinking that, and we need parents to know that the library is not a place for their children to go after school. Laura, when was the deadline to sign up for the bus? Was that this week? Do you know? Um, I know they extended it. Uh, I, I don't know the date. I'm sorry. I just wonder if we should get this out before the deadline. Well, that, I would like to, I want to get it out as, soon as, as soon as you guys it's are Friday. Yeah. Okay. It's Friday. Oh, I forget we have you there here. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's tomorrow. Sorry. It's tomorrow. Yeah, the deadline is tomorrow. Okay. He extended it just to okay. get some last minute people who hadn't registered yet i mean we haven't is I that haven't, a deadline for the um the you, you know you get a you pay less if you are for early registration or is that a deadline period i'm trying to load it but i can't that's a deadline it. period so that if you're not registered at that point you won't have a seat on the bus yes. I'm because going to say I have received new restrictions. Yeah. We have received no phone calls, no emails, or anyone asking about what the, what's going to happen after school. So I'm hoping people are just expecting that it's not that it's not happening. Um, if they're yeah, yeah and it's pretty it. generous that we're doing it this early. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think getting it out, you know, just telling them now that um, you know this. I, I think what, we, what what I was thinking is we we say that at our meeting tonight that we adopted the first reading of this policy it will be confirmed at the august meeting if parents have you know any input on it that that's their opportunity to you know come to the meeting and express their opinions but i don't know i think the answer i don't know how we can change it there's just not much that, i don't know that there's much we can do about this you know um so but i think if they get i i agree and my plan was really to get it out as soon as i mean you know maybe i do this announce this tomorrow and then worry about announcing the August 3rd date sometime next week, a little further down the road that would, that we're expanding the service to grab and go. Mm -hmm. All right, so we need a motion for this. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the children in the library temporary policy in response to COVID-19. I'll second, Nicole Buckley. Amy? In favor. Laura? Favor. All in favor. Where's my agenda? Did I get everything on the agenda? Um, I that was on my... yeah, I did everything on my everything on the agenda was addressed. So do you guys have anything anything additional? No. Okay. No. Okay. So call the meeting to a close at 7.51. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye.